Today I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips on how to buy wigs in tough times. You may not know this about me, but I am a super thrifty person. Now, I am in a unique and privileged and blessed position to be able to receive wigs for reviews, but I do often buy a lot of my wigs as well, so it does hurt me a little bit when my dollar doesn't go as far as it used to. The wig manufacturers just continue to increase prices. We've got uh, labor shortages, we've got supply shortages, we have inflation. There's a lot of pressure on prices these days. We have to be as thrifty as we can because wigs, to me, are a necessity. It's just as much as part of life as being able to put on that shirt and those pants to go out the door and be presentable. So how do we do that when times are a little bit tough? The first thing I recommend is know your budget for wigs, just like you do anything else. You kind of have an idea in your mind how much you can spend on your grocery bill every month. If you have a car payment, you know how much that is every month, mortgage and so on. Assign a figure to the wigs. So if you do your budget, and you decide that you're going to allocate two, three, four hundred dollars a month for wigs, work within that budget. Really discipline yourself to do that. And this brings me to my second tip on how to buy wigs in tough times. Credit cards. Don't use credit cards or any type of credit to purchase wigs. You basically just dig yourself a hole. There's interest that you have to pay on it. You're less likely to stick to a budget if it's as easy as just plugging in your credit card. And wigs are, they depreciate, right? We use them up, they're consumable. And the last thing you wanna do is get to the end of the life on your wig and need a new one, you still haven't paid off the old one. Credit cards, if mismanaged, can really get out of hand. And so what I like to do is when you're, when you're shopping online, you have to use your credit or your debit card. Um, that's just kind of the way the world is, right? But you just wanna keep an eye on that spending, make sure you're within your budget and don't carry a balance because if you carry a balance month over month on your credit cards, you will be charged a really high interest rate, especially with interest rates being as high as they are today. My third tip, and this is a really obvious one, everybody has probably turned to this as their first resort when they're pinched for cash, and that is shopping for discounts. Hit those clearance sites. Most of the on online retailers have a returns policy and those returns are recycled into their clearance section. You can really get a nice bargain, sometimes anywhere between 40 and 70% off of the wig style. And so a lot of people shop clearance just on a normal basis. They're like hawks, you know, they watch it every day and when something comes up that they want, they snap it up. This is a wonderful way to really cut down on the expense. The other thing is coupons and discounts. So know what your retailer coupons and discounts are. I know at Wig Studio One, you get automatic 30% off at checkout for many different brands. And they run sales on the brands that don't have a static discount offer. They do run sales nearly weekly. Also private sales. So watch out for wig wearers that are looking to resell some of their gently used wigs. So these private sales, you can find it on YouTube, a lot of them on Facebook, I think. Um, they generally use their social media to get the word out that they're selling a style and they'll give you instructions on how to purchase and things. So watch out for those private sales as well. I think that the secondary sales market for wigs has just exploded in the last couple of years. People are looking for bargains in this environment and who can blame them? I certainly don't wanna ever pay full price for a wig style unless it's just one that I absolutely have to have. My number four tip is ditch the FOMO. Have you heard of FOMO? F-O-M-O, -O. it's an acronym for fear of missing out. I had this terribly when I was a new wig wearer when the new styles just kept coming and coming and like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna miss out. I need these, I need this, I need that. Um, it can drive the urgency to buy. It can make you an impulsive buyer because you don't wanna miss out on a style. Uh, a lot of times when these new styles come out too, they sell out pretty quickly and there can be long back orders. And so it just really stokes this sense of FOMO in us and so reel that in, you've set your budget, you've stuck to it, now you need to develop the habits and discipline that it's gonna take 
to not overspend. And reeling in your FOMO is a big part of that. Number five is take better care of the wigs that you do have. I know I've been known to buy wigs and then just kind of put them in the corner or neglect the maintenance just because that's my house wig or my workout wig. But there might come a time when those workout wigs or that house wig or those wigs that you don't wear very often and kind of neglect come to the front. So now you can buy less wigs, therefore you have to take care of the ones that you have. So just be sure to uh, properly maintain them. Don't overwash them, don't overstyle them, detangle them after wearing, use some silicone or something to protect the ends. No wig lasts forever. But if you can milk that last month or so out of a wig style before you have to part with it, it ends up going to save you a lot of money because that really adds up, those purchases do. So proper wig care and maintenance. My number six tip is go a little shorter on your wigs. So we all know that shorter wigs tend to last longer because they're not dragging the clothing, they're not snarling up as easily. And if you love your long, long wigs and you just can't bear to part with them, let's try to minimize friction in other ways. We talked about maintenance and how to maintain your wig for longevity. Um, but also, you might wanna consider styling it in a way that will reduce the friction and pressure on those ends. So if you've got a really long wig um, and you're wearing it every single day, you might wanna wear it up. So you could just do an updo, uh, even a side pony, anything so the least amount of fibers is dragging against the clothing. So if you put that wig up, and get it off the shoulders and don't overstyle it with product and uh, friction with brushes and things. It will definitely last you a lot. Number seven, look for a great sister style at a lesser price. So let's use an example. Let's say you really love John Renault's Julianne. It's completely hand tied. It's a mid-length weight beach wave style. It's absolutely gorgeous and you wear that as your primary wig every day. Julianne is over $500 retail before any discounts are applied or anything. It's a very expensive style because it's hand tied and it has a lot of monofilament features. So let's instead take a look at something that looks like Julianne but uh, has a much lower price tag as a sister style. Let's take a look at um, Scarlet by John Renault. It just has a lace front and then is open cap. There is a huge difference in the price between Scarlet and Julianne. So you could have both. You can get the same color on your Scarlet as you have on your Julianne. And really, nobody's really gonna know the difference. In fact, you could take the Julianne and use it for those special occasions when you need to look your best. And then your everyday look would be the Scarlet. Um, and because they're both John Renault, you can find the same color and I don't think anybody would really notice that much. So by selecting a sister style that is less expensive than the one that you're used to wearing might help, help you stretch a buck and make that go a little farther. Number eight, get the skills that you need to make your wig last longer. Um, a lot of times it reaches, you can tell that a wig reaches the end of its life because it starts to get a little bit uh, snaggly, there's tangles, there's matting going on, and the ends start to fray. When that happens, the movement isn't as nice. Everybody loves a new wig, but that might not be possible or in, within your budget. So learn how to make that wig last longer. There's a lot of different things you can do, and I have a video up um, on how to revive an otherwise dead wig. <laughs> and basically, I kind of uh, use some uh, blending shears to trim out some of the ends that were damaged and shorten up that wig a little bit, but just kind of taking out some of the ends. That is one thing that you can do to give it a little bit of extra life. You could do a deep conditioning treatment. What I like to do is I'll use a silicone, I'll spray on my Simply Style and Silicone Spray, and then um, I'll let that sit for just a couple of minutes, and then I'll soak it in a conditioner, a synthetic wig safe conditioner. I'll soak that for an hour or so, and then when I get it out, I, um, I just tamp it dry and then maybe even add a little bit of spray conditioner. Now, a lot of ladies will use steam to revive a wig because steam will go onto the synthetic fiber and it will smooth, smooth it out a little bit by using that moist heat. 
Now it's not going to be a cure-all. I have tried these methods and it seems like you could get an extra week or two, but that might just be enough to help you stretch a buck. But for those of you who have natural hair, how do you manage your hair underneath that wig? Do you go to a salon every month and have a trim? Do you still continue to cut and color your hair, your natural hair? This is a huge expense. That's why years ago I decided to do my own natural hair. I decided that I was going to buzz cut my hair with some wall clippers and then I was just going to scissor the top and whatnot and it did not look perfect for a while but I got the hang of it and now I'm able to do this successfully and still have a presentable looking head of natural hair. So no matter what your situation is under the cap, if you're spending money on your natural hair every month, get rid of that and do it yourself. That's another way that it can help you stretch a buck. My number 10 tip on how to shop for wigs in tough times, make a wish list and let everybody know about it. <laughs> so wigs can be given as gifts. I hear ladies all the time say, this is what my husband is gonna buy me for my birthday, or I'm getting this one for Christmas from my kids. They're buying me this wig. So make that wish list. So Christmas, other holidays, birthdays, make sure your loved ones, family and friends know which wigs you want so that you can get those as gifts. A lot of time your family members don't know really what to get you, or you end up getting a, an appliance that just kind of sits or something else that you don't truly want. If you are a wig wearer and you are having trouble finding the funds to buy the wigs that you want, make sure everybody knows what you want and you might just get them as gifts. So what is a wig wearer to do when times are tight and money is short? Stretch a buck with my previous 10 tips. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you soon right here on Taz's Wig Closet.